Hello again. Uh, we're here, this time with a rifle that many of you have reminded me to make videos about, uh, the Savage 110. It took me a long time, uh, partly because I didn't have a Savage 110 and um, n no other really good reason. And before I forget, um, my producer has asked me to remind you to please subscribe and join me on Patreon, so please subscribe and join me on Patreon and uh, it makes a big difference for the channel and and all the things that we have to do to bring these videos to you. But getting back to the 110, apparently now it's uh, the longest lasting continuously produced bolt action rifle, American bolt action rifle. Um, I actually looked it up, it's like 1957 or 1958 they started making these Savage 110s for around a hundred dollars and it's always been an interesting rifle to me and it was one of the first rifles that I um, I was taking into pieces because the way these Savages are designed is quite different from rifles of that period which would have included the Winchester Model 70 and the Remington 721, 722 and so on. There were others around but those were the big names and then I guess later, later on Ruger came out with a 77. So I thought I will um, get a hold of an old one and I think this is quite an old one. It might be one of the first made. Um, it's It has all the features that defined the early 110. So we'll just review them. The bolt handle, um, quite properly made and located. Uh, this is a rifle of assemblies it's it's a it's a the concept is that individual components can accomplish what the pre-64 model 70 accomplished in forged parts that were one piece which are difficult to to handle in a in a mass production situation so the bolt handle still nicely made nicely designed well located um, of course this is one piece and I think that's another piece and then uh, worth drawing to your attention is is the locking lug arrangement. So this component here is the locking mechanism, and this is more of a bolt guide. And a lot of people think they both lock the action, and I've received quite a few messages about that. And the easiest way for me to show what's happening is if, if we can focus in on, I'll close the bolt so what I'm saying will happen is as the bolt closes well first of all nothing's gonna happen and then when I turn the bolt this will rotate this will not rotate you won't be able to see it too clearly but I think I think you'll be able to pick that up so there we have that and then we we, we turn and you can see nothing's happening with that with what looks like rear lugs um, so this this is a bolt guide and a gas seal and there's a uh, quite a clever mechanism in the bolt head design which ensures perfect headspace with every shot which uh, at least partly accounts for why the Savage is known as an extremely accurate rifle that assembly as well as excellent barrels and the newer AccuTrigger probably fully realize the accuracy potential of the action which is a forged stiff properly made action the rifle is not heavy um, by any means it has typical bolt action functions and now since we've been looking at this bolt head um, watch as I rotate the bolt you'll see a pin appear here that's because if you remove the bolt and remove that pin you can remove this whole assembly here and there are many modern rifles now that offer takedown barrels of course if you change from 30 out 6 or 270 or any of that family of cartridges to a magnum cartridge then the bolt face has to be changed so by way of driving out that pin theoretically one can remove both the lugs and the bolt guide and the bolt head and um, you can fire the magnum cartridge I'm not saying that that's what they had in mind but 
newer rifles uh, made by Zauer and others include the removable bolt head almost identically with that pin and and actually that concept is even carried on in a different form to the Blazer R8 and R93. Um, anyway some people were saying how come you know I'm not um, talking too much about the 110 and um, there are a lot of parts in this rifle but they accomplish the objective which is to make a very successful very accurate and reliable firearm. So in terms of the result there's no argument. They succeeded and they've lasted longer than anyone. Um, this is in 308. It's exceptionally accurate and this predates the Accu trigger uh, but this particular rifle doesn't know that it's supposed to be less accurate. I, I actually can't think of a more accurate rifle. Anyhow, bolt op operation typical. We've got kind of a variation of a tang safety. It's a nice convenient location here and um, it's positive but as you know I never really trust safeties and I don't care what they say about them. And um, I've got these pivoting. Oh, I'll show you these for youngsters that haven't seen this kind of scope mount. Made by Weaver, maybe they still make them but I don't think so. Uh, very handy. There's a uh, spring steel here so you just pivot it down and snap it on same with the now of course the scope would be in here so if you needed iron sights because of a driving snowstorm or something was five yards away and you couldn't um, see anything but fur uh, then you just tip the scope off which is actually quite practical they should make them again um, here's something worth mentioning when you handle a rifle it's noticeably lighter even though it's a full-size rifle barrels regular length barrels regular diameter um, so here's the floor plate it's just a piece of sheet steel and it's quite interesting somehow I ended up with about 20 of these floor plates I think somebody sold them to me for some reason and I just kept them so before the video I was looking at them and not absolutely nothing wrong with them but they weigh almost nothing and they're secured by two screws and the trigger guards aluminum. Uh, the stock on this very early model um, is quality walnut and it actually has perfect layout and grain. Uh, you can see how the grain runs through the grip which is the ideal. That way you don't have any cracking or splitting or anything like that in the wrist area. Check rings exceptionally well done. Uh, in fact I was looking at this and thinking um, couldn't really find anything wrong with the rifle overall it, it's just the engineering that is a little bit different but for probably people would say well ahead of its time uh, you see this little collar here with the, with the neurals on it or whatever you call those uh, this facilitates headspace with the model 70 and the old let's say Mauser style you have to thread the barrel in and then using go and no go cartridges which measure headspace and headspace is just the difference distance between the front of the bolt head and the base of the cartridge and when this is closed that cartridge must be perfectly pressed into the chamber no space or almost no space and why is that because when you fire that cartridge wants to come back and you can't allow it to have any momentum it can't come back and, and and hit that bolt head. It has to be squeezed tight in there, not too tight. So that's why they have go and no go gauges. Anyway, with this system, with this collar, which is now used in different forms by many manuf manufacturers, um, you can accomplish headspace in a factory setting uh, very economically. And I don't think that looks particularly bad. Some people do. Um, the uh, protrusion of the firing pin can be adjusted, although I've never done it and I'm only repeating what I was told uh, by, by means of the, by the bolt. But again, I maybe shouldn't have said that, but if you ever need to adjust your firing pin, that apparently is possible. Uh, bolt removal, pull the trigger, push this down, the bolt comes out. Uh, the barrel on this one is beautifully made. It has the the milled island for the rear sight wow. and the front sights on a ramp uh, with actually a typical um, uh, Savage leaf that reminds me of the one on my Savage 99. 
And this one has uh, sling swivels, which look factory original. Actually, everything looks factory on this one. And I probably should have looked up serial numbers and all that, but just by the design, it has the it has the um, the ejector just above the magazine in the back, and that's a feature of the very earliest models. And then they switched to a different system, which allowed them to use clips or removable magazines. But this one is, has the fixed floor plate, uh, which doesn't bother me at all because this is kind of the original 110. It's um, it hasn't been improved or anything, and I can tell you that the operation is flawless. There's nothing that I can think of, um, but I'm a user, not a manufacturer. So of course, a lot of improvements have to do with um, intelligent things that the manufacturers come up with, which they learn from, you know, one, two, three production runs and so forth. So that's it. Um, I hope I did a, 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 a justice to this remarkable rifle. And for those of you that absolutely love the 110, I can't disagree with you. It's it's terrific. It's not a pre-64 Model 70, um, but a lot of people say that those are overrated. This is a 243 featherweight, and um, you know this is old school gun making in my right hand. And then the Savage is is a more modern concept and obviously a lasting and excellent one. And that that Accu trigger when they came out with it, um, really made the Savage um, take off. I, I noticed more of them at the ranges, more all over the place actually. And who knows what the future holds. And uh, now they have the short action, which I think they just call the 10. And, and they had many other number designations for different models, which I don't follow. So there it is. This is my old original 110. I'm glad I was able to find one for you. And um, I took it to the range. It's uh, it's a, I would out of a hundred I'd have to say it's a 98% rifle with a lot of parts but um, they all go together the way they're supposed to and it works extremely well so that is it for the Savage 110 thanks for watching and please do remember to just subscribe and if you can at all uh, join me on patreon thanks a lot I'll see you next time